You're listening to Upcycling with Deb. This is a little Debbie, a bite-sized version of the longer podcast, Upcycling with Deb. I'm your host, Deb Colometta. I wrote a number one best-selling book called Best Offer, Best Life. It's about online yard sales and how you can leverage them to create the wealth that you want in every area of your life. You can find it on Amazon, Audible. It's now available in Kindle and also audiobook format. Recently, we were doing a huge organization project in my house. I just got to that point where I was starting to trip over things more so than usual. It just felt like I had a film of stuff that was scattered through the house. And I really try to keep up with it. So I don't know how people do it if they don't go through their things every couple of weeks and just kind of discard things and restore order. I decided to tackle some problem areas in my kids' bedrooms. And one of those issues was stuffed animals. Oh my gosh, when you're not looking, they just multiply on their own, I swear. I don't know where we got half these things. I don't know if they were claw machines or gifts or what. They were moments of weakness, I call them. Each one of them is worth probably 10 to $20, I'm saying. I mean, we had all kinds of top name collectible stuffed animal friends and souvenirs. Any parent knows that you're going to spend at least 10 bucks on these things to get them into your home. And even if they're part of a claw machine, think of how many times you have to enter coins or how many dollars you have to spend before you actually get that claw machine prize. So each item represented many dollars. There were dozens, many, many stuffed animals. I just did a little quick exercise with my kids. I dumped all their stuffed animals in one pile and I let them sort them. They were went, basically went into three piles. One, definitely keeping. Two, kind of on the fence about. And three, easy decisions to get rid of, discard, and recycle. That made it a little easier for them. They knew that they could put things in that middle pile where they could maybe hang on to it. I could put it in a holding pen, so to speak, put it in a bag and keep it in the garage for a couple of months and see if they had any, you know, twinge of hoping or wishing that they had that stuffed friend back. And guess what? We've done that before. And they never ask for that friend, that stuffed friend back. But I just like to do it as a safety precaution because I don't want anyone to have any trauma when they grow up saying, my mother threw away a stuffed animal that meant a lot to me. Because, you know, at this age, the stuffed animals and the dolls, sometimes they can feel like real people to these kids. And with the pandemic, I just don't want to put them through anything else. They went through this exercise with me. I was super proud of them. I couldn't believe how many stuffed animals they readily said goodbye to. And it made me kick myself for not doing it earlier because I was like, wow, they really got rid of at least a third, no problem. And then for those ones that they were kind of on the fence about getting rid of, they put those in the pile very easily. And in fact... I found myself at 10 o'clock at night, the day that we organized those stuffed animals, I pulled a couple out because I was actually feeling attached to them and I didn't want my kids to feel sad, but I don't know if it was because one of them in particular was at least $50. It was a battery operated toy thingy. I don't know. It was like admitting that I had made a major buying faux pas, but my daughter really was a good sport about this and she was very brave and a great example on how to say goodbye to your things. That's a lesson to me and hopefully have lessened to you, involve the kids. They're going to surprise you. And it's important for them to get used to the idea of kind of getting rid of their stuff, making room for the new. You should involve them. You shouldn't do it behind their back. Why not ask them? They might surprise you with how readily they do part with things. Here are some tips for what you can do with your fluffy friends. You can involve your kids, as I mentioned. They will help you make some decisions. I'll tell you, if I had gone through that pile myself, I would have come up with a lot fewer 
stuffed friends that I would have discarded because I would have assumed that they wanted to keep some of them. Um, and they were actually really ruthless with the ones that they were able to get rid of. That actually worked out to my advantage to get them involved. And I also told them as we went, you know, if each one of these cost a few dollars and you have a hundred here, that's like five or six hundred dollars in this pile. You know, wouldn't you rather have five or six hundred dollars to go for an overnight and do dinners out and go to a hotel or something and do something fun or an amusement park? They totally got that concept. That will stick in their minds for the next time we go somewhere and they ask to get a stuffed animal. Maybe not the $10 is going to break the bank, but it's the $10 after $20 after $20 after $10 that really does begin to add up. And it's not a good investment. Involve the kids when you're trying to get rid of those stuffed friends. And like I said, don't force it. If they need to put it aside for a while and they're not sure, no problem. Just kind of keep the stuffed animal out of sight, out of mind in a black or opaque trash bag so they can't see. It's very, very important to get it out of mind. Once you've made that choice, don't look back. Number two, you can pick one bin for your child's room and really stick to that. When the bin starts to overflow, it's time to do a purging, or it's time to stop buying more stuffed animals. Number three, you can put those stuffed friends in an out-of-sight holding bin in the garage, and that way they can call them back into their space if they have second thoughts about it. But I wouldn't necessarily remind them of this or after a couple of months have them go through the bin again. I wouldn't even do that because they're probably going to get pulled back in by these stuffed friends, and if they haven't thought of them, I wouldn't bring it up myself. <laughs> also, Number four, for helping you get rid of these stuffed friends, find a textile bin or a recycling program. I'm not one to advocate donating these to other people for any kind of use. I think it's really yucky to think of another child having a discarded stuffed friend. I'm sure that there are examples of things that are collectible that could maybe be sold on eBay, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ones that maybe your kid snuggled for a couple of days and then forgot about. You can find a textile bin where they actually will recycle the contents of the stuffed animals and turn it into other sustainable products. Or you can perhaps donate them to an animal shelter, and then those stuffed friends can be little companions for the animals that are either in the hospital temporarily or waiting for adoption. And my fifth tip, don't look directly into the eyes of the stuffed animal. They will pull you back every doggone time. <laughs> So just remind yourself, they are not real beings, they're just material, and put them out of sight, out of mind, and you'll all get through this together. Remember, just be strong, don't buy the stuffed friends in the first place. I recently wrote an article that I featured on my website, thedebsite.com. I hope you'll check it out for free. It's an article that gives you some good ideas for what you can do with those stuffed animal friends and how your kids can be involved in the decision-making process. It's a great way for them to enter into the world of clearing their clutter and helping to prevent them from buying these sorts of things in the first place. Thank you for listening to this episode of Little Debbie, a bite-sized version of the podcast Upcycling with Deb. I'm your host, Deb Colometta. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Deb Colometta, or go to my website, thedebsite.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening.